test, test. Welcome everyone in this new video. Hope you're doing great. Happy New Year. All my best wishes for 2023. Speaking of 2023, can't wait to get the F1 season to start again. Um, the winter break is great, but I miss watching races. Today, what to expect in 2023. I've put four points on my board. Um, please, if you have any more points or things that you expect in 2023, Leave them as a comment, I'll read them, and um, there's gonna be more video coming up very soon about 2023, but for now. Those are my four points of 2023 and what to expect. So, first one, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull. Yes, I see Mercedes coming back into the title fight, while well, I see Red Bull staying on top, even though they've got less wind tunnel than anyone, everyone else because of their position and championship, as well as their penalty for breaching the cost cap. I think Ferrari is going to have a strong car again and I think Mercedes is going to be up there with them. So that is actually that's the thing I'm the most looking forward to is seeing those three top teams every weekend fighting for pole position and wins. If we get that, we're going to be jumping on the sofa like crazy because there's going to be some good races and good racing on track. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Um, the rules for 2023 haven't changed that much. The cars need to be raised a little bit more. The floors are going to be tightened and the rule up is going to be stronger. But the rules are staying pretty much the same, which make me feel that Red Bull should still be at the front, Ferrari should still have a very good baseline, and Mercedes has learned a lot from 2022, and it's gonna be strong next year. Point number two, Piastri versus Norris. Um, I'm excited to see what Oscar Piastri can, can do um, in Formula One. He didn't have the best entry with all the Alpine McLaren story. He's in a great car, in a great team next to a very strong teammate that has uh, made the old McLaren team his own team. So never easy to enter that way, but also a good point as a rookie to come into a team that has an established driver, which is pretty young and kind of come from the same background, you know, Formula 3, Formula 2, uh, and no Formula 1. So I'm excited to see what Oscar Piastri can do there. Um, I think it's, it's definitely one of those seats that you really want to be in when you get to Formula 1. So that's something I'm going to... Keep an eye on. Number three, talking of young driver and less young driver or more experienced driver, Fernando Alonso. You know how much I love Fernando Alonso. I love his attitude. I love his on-track dedication, his engagement. He drives, he's 40 plus years old, uh, but he drives like he was 22. Uh, every session, every lap, every practice, he's full on, he's sliding in the car. Um, he's going for it. And uh, I'm excited to see with Aston Martin what the challenge can be. Is it gonna be a success? Or is it going to be a failure? We've seen Fernando Alonso changing a lot of teams through the year. Not always for the best, um, but I'm truly hoping that he's going to get a good car and give us some of the performances that he's able to do. Remember, Canada qualifying in 2022 is third on the grid. Uh, what else was he super strong? There was another wet qualifying, so it got, it's gone on top of my head, but uh, it was up there. You remember Austin 2022. He flew up in the air with his next future teammate, uh, his future teammate Lance Stroll. Car landed, finished the race, still scored points. So absolutely stunning on that one. And then number four, the French duo. Um, I'm excited to see what Alpine is going to do with two French drivers. It can, it can go bad. Uh, let me not lie to, to you. It can go bad if, every, if each of the drivers wants to be the French driver doing the job for the French team. It can go south. But it can also go really well. It can also be that those two guys that were not the best friend in their young age um, I've matured a lot. They both race winners so out of the same Palmares. They both have one race win. Um, if they if they go on nicely together and they work well, that could be a really cool success story for Halpin. Uh, for Halpin, that's that's my wish. Obviously, as a French driver, I hope they they're gonna go on together nicely. Uh, they're gonna do a good job. Halpin's gonna keep building up on that momentum of 2022, finishing fourth in the constructor championship, and uh, with those two experienced drivers doing a good job, but they need to keep an eye on, on that relationship between the two. Because if it starts being a fight, ego fight, a fight to be the best French driver on the grid for the French team, then things can go um, can go bad. Um, so those are the four, th four things that I'm really looking forward to see in 2023. Please as well, like, subscribe, make a comment, um, tell me what you're looking forward in, in 2023. There is more, obviously, there's Logan Sargent, the American driver coming to Williams, there's Nick DeVries full-time with Alfa Torre. There's more, but I, I, I just picked up four points so we don't stay here for a, a too long time. Um, and those are my points, but make sure that you give me yours. And as I say, very soon I'm going to do some more videos 
about the top team and what I expect from each of those guys, uh, as well as how do we set up a Formula 1 car. Thank you, and I'll see you very soon.